Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is EJ Kwanabens and thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and stay connected. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I've done a video, um, so I thought I'd take an opportunity today to create a new one for you with respect to the teachings of hand drums. Now, I come from a territory otherwise known as Wabidanga, um, also known as White Sand, which happens to fall under the territory of the Robinson Superior 1850 Treaty Territory, approximately 21 hours northwest of Toronto, still in the province of Ontario. And so I can only speak to the teachings from my territory, uh, which is of the Northern Wulin and Anishinaabe people. Uh, however, there are many different interpretations and meanings and teachings of hand drums right across Turtle Island. And so as I always mention in previous videos, people should always speak to their local elders and knowledge keepers to, to gain that, that insight and those teachings of the hand drum from the territory that they come from. And so I will speak about the hand drum as it re relates to the people where I come from. And um, hopefully you'll have a little greater understanding as to what this all means with respect to the hand drum. Now, what I have in front of me are three items. One, we have a small little drumstick. And in the drumstick, it has little stones in it made out of rawhide, okay? The second item we have here is a rattle made out of rawhide with stones in this one as well, slightly bigger. Then we have a hand drum made out of moose hide uh, with cedar framing. And I also should mention that the sticks are made out of cedar as well. Um, and, and this is what we call a, a hand drum, a traditional hand drum that that we have in our territory. Now hand drums come in many different um, shapes and sizes and uh, are made either with uh, moose hide or deer hide or elk hide. It really depends on the geographical region that um, the people that uh, use the drums, um, uh, whatever region that you come from will be, have varying different uh, materials used for the hand drums. Uh, but in this case, this is a moose hide made out of cedar framing. Uh, this particular drum was uh, created and made by my mother. Um, and this drum is approximately, hmm, I think it's about 20 years old now. Okay. Um, it's an excellent shape. Uh, there is no cracks, no splinters, nothing of any kind that is of concern to it. I've taken great care of this. This is a, a prized possession that I was given by my mother. And so I honor it by taking care of it. Uh, these two particular items here are items that are also equally in and around 20 years old as well. Again, the, um, the raw hides that are used to create the, the shaping of the, the rattles and the drumsticks, they haven't received any, they're not any splinters or cracks or anything like that. It's really about how you care for these items. But with respect to the hand drum and where it, where it originates from and, and, and why it was created, is going to have varying different uh, interpretations and teachings with it. With respect to the territory that I come from, um, the hand drum, the rattle, and the, the, the drumstick actually have originated from what we refer to as the little boy drum or the water drum. The water drum in our ceremonies is a very, very powerful um, item that, that is used by certain individuals um, that have certain songs that are used for it um, and are used during certain times of the year um, uh, with specific meaning and intent. The hand drum, or rather the, the, the water drum, is a very powerful, powerful drum. And um, I could speak about that particular drum at another time, but the purpose of this video is really about trying to, to explain how this particular drum and how it was, where it, why it was created, or the history of the hand drum with respect to the Northern Wulin and Anishinaabe people, that it actually came from the water drum. There's been an evolution of drums taking place. And in our territory, the water drum was then placed or, or evolved into uh, a variation of that drum uh, otherwise known as the big drum. And when I refer to the big drum, it's a drum that is situated on four posts 
um, and it's usually off the ground. And um, that particular drum is used in social event events like powwows and ceremonies and so on and so forth. But we have to be very mindful that in order to understand and appreciate that particular drum, we have to understand where that drum came from. And that drum came from the original drum of the water drum, right? And so as we move from water drum to our traditional drum to our now our hand drums, this is a variation of the original drum being the water drum. Right? And so these two items here are to remind us of that various different evolution stages of the drum. And knowing that this rattle and this drumstick came from the hand drum, the hand drum came from the traditional drum the big drum and that traditional big drum came from the original drum of the water drum you see all of these these drums and rattles and and and, and uh, drumsticks um, all have one thing in common they're all made of the same items they all represent the same item being the water drum they all represent our connection to our creator and the connection that we have to song um, and our ways of communicating to our creator through song. And so whether you are a, uh, using a water drum, a big drum, or a hand drum, or a rattle, or a drumstick, all of these items hold significant meaning. They all should be viewed and treated in the same respectful manner as is with any of our ceremonial pipes, as is with any of our ceremonial feathers and medicines and, and so on and so forth. They all require the same equal amount of care and maintenance, right? And so when we use our hand drum and when we use our rattle or our drumstick, it's not about hitting this item in a way that is intended to be forceful. When we hit the drum, it is intended to call upon all the spiritual manidos, all the spiritual beings, all those who have passed away, and all those that are present in this moment, and all those that are yet to come into the physical form in the future. These drums and these items are intended to be instruments to make our connections known to our Creator. And it requires all of us the responsibility to know that these are not items that are to be played with. These are not items that are used or intended to be used in protests. And oftentimes we see that nowadays. We see a lot of our drums, our hand drums and our big drums used in protests. Um, and songs are being sung, and I'm not saying that protests are not necessary, um, but sometimes some of our items in these protests should not be introduced in those types of environments. Because oftentimes there's a lot of aggression happening. There's a lot of energy that, that negative energy that, that really should not be um, around or these items should not be subjected to that kind of negative energy. These are not what these items are intended for. These items are intended for to create understandings and peace and, and serenity and our connections to all the spiritual beings in that good way. And so when I see these in, in protests, for example, or in demonstrations, I oftentimes refer to the teachings that I receive from the elders from our territory. And they oftentimes would say that these items have no place in those types of environments. You see, when we were in ceremonies, we are to be of clear mind. We are to be of a, a state of being that is peaceful, a harmonious place that is founded on kindness and love and respect. 
and most importantly, humility. And so when these items are used in these type of environments of protest or demonstrations, it goes against those original teachings that are founded in our territory of the Northern Wula Anishinaabe people, that we're never to use these items in those types of environments because it goes against those natural laws and those original teachings of peace and harmony and kindness and love and humility. And so the hand drum comes in many different forms. The hand drum itself can be a double-sided um, hide drum, could be a single-sided hand drum, um, and there are many different looks to it. It could be, um, in this case, this is a, a, a circular drum, um, but there are hexagon drums and there are um, just smaller drums and medium-sized drums and so on and so forth. But all at, uh, at the end of the day, they're all the same uh, items and they're used for the same purpose, which is to call upon our Creator and to acknowledge us as humble beings and to acknowledge all of the spiritual beings that exist and to do so by calling upon them in the most humbling, respectful way. And so I leave you with this, knowing that as we, we enter in these, these very turbulent, uh, challenging and unique times, I urge all of our people, all of our indigenous people on Turtle Island to, to call upon those ceremonies and to, to call upon all of those songs that we have been given from our creator and from our ancestors um, and to sit in the most humble, respectful way, to sit in our lodges or sit in our homes, sit in our ceremonial circles, and to call upon those energies of the Creator to come visit us. And we do so by using these hand drums in such a way that reminds us that life is very precious and that we have learnings to do in the physical form as we view ourselves as a physical embodiment of our lodges. And so singing a song on these drums is not just singing a song, it's about connecting to the song and to the people, those of the past, those of the, of the present, and those of the future. And to do so in the most humbling manner and to be very mindful of how we interact with one another and how we interact with ourselves to these items that are very powerful items and to know that this particular drum is a representation of the original drum of the water drum. Saying that, the drum itself and the beat of the drum reminds us when we were inside our mother's womb hearing the original drum of our mother's heartbeat. This is why the sound of the drum is so familiar to each and every one of us, regardless of which nation we come from, regardless of which territory we come from, regardless of what, what whatever walk of life we come from around the world, that we've all can know that the familiarity of our mother's heart is the reminder of our original drum. And that original drum has evolved into the water drum, has evolved to the traditional drum, has evolved to the hand drum, to the rattles, to the drumstick. So on that note, I want to just share that with you and hopefully you can take a little bit away from, from this teaching and to, to, to approach how we use these drums and these items in the most humbling, respectful manner and to know that they should not be used in protests and demonstrations because this is not the place for these items to come alive. You gotcha.